Hey guys, what's up? It's John, welcome back. Um, I'm gonna continue the series that I was doing earlier about uh, building a personal finance app with the Plaid API in Django. Um, this is something I'm working on for fun. Um, I, I manage my budget and, and expenses through mint.com and a series of spreadsheets and stuff. And uh, there's more custom things that I wanna do with that. So that's why I'm working on this project. Uh, the first tutorial I did was on transactions, how to pull transactions uh, using the Plaid API. And now I'm starting to think about how to categorize transactions. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I built kind of a rough first draft of, of how I want to start to think about categorizing transactions. And if you're wanting to build a budget app yourself, this might be helpful in showing you a few techniques that you can use to get started with that. Um, so let me, let me kind of walk through this. Um, so first of all, I, I built the most simple MVP of this as possible, which is kind of a meta note that I'd like to mention on development in general that I found helpful for, for me is uh, I started to get into the weeds when I was thinking about categorizing transactions. So I was thinking, you know, obviously eventually it'd be cool to have AI learn how I correct the transactions uh, categories because that's an annoying part of Mint is if you have to keep correcting the same transactions from the same vendors. Um, and then also, you know, th there's mapping logic that can get more advanced. But for the MVP, my goal is basically take uh, the transactions that I get from the Plaid API and then uh, map them to the transactions that I have for my app, a fixed set of transactions that I've created. Um, and eventually, you know, we'll add functionality to like let users add their own transactions or I'm sorry, their own categories uh, and do more fancy things. But this is the starting point of the M starting point of the MVP. So I'm starting out in the get transactions view. This is not the ideal place probably to call this function to categorize transactions because every time you refresh your transaction list, you don't want to like recategorize everything. Um, that's definitely not the right, right way to do it. But for now, since I haven't built that view yet, uh, we're going to start somewhere. So I'm starting here. Um, so what I'm doing basically is uh, once I call get, tra get transactions, um, so uh, on the dashboard here, uh, right now I just have refresh transactions. Um, but uh, what I want is to take the transactions that I get and um, I'm going to go and call, once, once I've actually pulled the transactions here, I'm going to call categorize transactions and that's going to do the logic to map them to categories. And the end result that I want here is I want to take all the categories that I've budgeted here, and then I want to uh, have all the transactions sum up to the proper amounts. Um, now, not all of these are accurate because um, uh, I haven't recategorized incorrect transactions. Um, you have to do some manual correction right now after the initial like automatic categorization. So, but the idea is let's pull the transactions, let's aggregate them by category, and let's let's make sure we can do that so we can compare to the amounts that we budgeted on our budget. All right, so let's go to the logic. So if we're gonna go to categorize transactions, um, so this is, the, this is the function that I've included in, in the utils.py folder. Um, so that's where I'm gonna store some of these helper functions. Um, so we're taking in a, a transactions uh, object here and I'm gonna iterate through each transaction here. Um, and eventually I might put a little breakpoint in here. So um, I'm gonna iterate through the set of transactions. And the first step I'm gonna do is, well, this is worth noting actually. So the way that the Plaid API returns transactions is it returns an array of strings basically. Um, and so if we, if we look at the actual model here, uh, I have that logic, um, or I have that field specified on the transaction model. So it's an array field um, and it's an array of, of strings. So it'll be like food, uh, comma, like groceries. Uh, so it's, in, it's, it's kind of a descending specificity, starting with the most generic category, going to the, the most specific. Um, and so going back here, we wanna pull the initial uh, category array that Plaid gives us. And then the purpose of this is we wanna map that that string, uh, we, we, we want to map the most relevant category string to a category that we recognize uh, in our database. So um, I don't want to use strings to deal with categories because I want categories to be objects that I can assign foreign keys to, like in case you have a subcategory for 
you want it to be able to reference like a parent category. Um, and then also different things like maybe like, uh, is this category custom or not? And showing you what that looks like right now, you know, it's, it's a very simple category model, but it has things like, okay, uh, if it's custom made, who does, the, who's it, who does it belong to? So like we specify a user as a foreign key. And then there's a Boolean saying whether or not it's, it's a custom category to, to distinguish it from the built-in categories that I've created. Um, and so you don't get that if you just pull, you just assign a, a, an array field to the transaction object. Um, okay, so now that we have that determined, now by default, I'm gonna set this uh, transaction category to miscellaneous because not all transactions that you get back from Plaid actually have a category assigned to them. And so let, let's talk about this enum here, built-in categories. So built-in categories is how I am specifying uh, the categories that I want to be built in or fixed on this app. And so this is, this is like my source of truth for what categories uh, does my database recognize and, and what can we work with here. Eventually, like I said, we're gonna add user uh, defined categories, um, which those will be separate from built-in categories. But for now, we're doing built-in. So this is a list of the categories that I want to have in my app. Um, this is very similar to the list you would find on Mint. It's where I kind of pulled most of these from and kind of added some that I use more than others. Um, so that's the first thing is we use this enum to be able to kind of specify relevant categories. And if you'll see here, I'm assigning custom enum values to each, each of these. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because uh, these values actually are the IDs of these category objects in the database. So that way, if we're, if, you know, it gives us an easy way to kind of deal with categories uh, while also like using uh, these enum values to query the database um, or update a transaction for a given category. Um, so if we call built-in categories.service and repairs, uh, it's, and then we take that value, it'll be seven, which is the ID uh, of that category in the database. So that, this is my first kind of like thought of like, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to kind of uh, have an easy way to, to, to work with these categories in, in my app? Um, we also have a category map here. And the purpose of this is it's mapping keywords from the Plaid, uh, the basic like string categories that Plaid gives us. Remember, it's an array of strings. So uh, later, we're going to go through all of those words in, in those strings, those keywords, and I want a way to easily be able to recognize which of those keywords maps to a category in my database. And so if a transaction has clothing as the most specific category in it, I want to be able to just easily uh, key into this, this dictionary and then get the enum value for that so I can, I can work with that in the database. Um, so we have the enum of categories which the value, of which the values are the IDs. And then we have the category map, which takes plaid transaction category uh, strings and maps them to like built-in categories in my app. So those are the two main kind of uh, structures here worth noting. And then let's go to the logic. So after we've just set a default miscellaneous in case we don't have transactions, um, I'm setting a, a variable here, cat found to false. Um, I'll show you why that's necessary later on, but it's just a way, it's, a, it's basically just like a, a flag to, to notify whether or not we found a category that matches uh, uh, our built-in categories. So like I said earlier, not all transactions have categories. So if they don't, then we wanna go ahead and assign uh, this transaction um, to, uh, we wanna assign the built-in category ID of this transaction to the default miscellaneous category. So this is basically a way for me uh, to uh, take this transaction and specify what the foreign key is going to be. So this is just gonna be the ID that we're gonna reference with the foreign key, the parent uh, category. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna set that to the miscellaneous value and continue to the next transaction and we don't need the rest of the logic. Okay, so if, if we do have original categories uh, from Plaid, uh, I'm gonna iterate through them in reverse. And the reason for that, um, which I will show you an example of, is that they are ordered, like I said earlier, uh, in reverse specificity. So from generic to specific. So, so let's try to see what this looks like um, 
I'm going to go to refresh transactions. It's going to take a while. Okay, so now um, we've begun, we've called categorized transactions. We're iterating through the categories in reverse because if you look up here, original categories, this is what Plaid gives us. It starts with shops and then digital purchase. And uh, we don't like, it's much more useful to have digital pur purchase as a category than shops um, because it's more specific to the transaction. So um, what I'm doing is that I'm just iterating through this array of, of categories in reverse, simple. Now, if the cat, uh, category is in our category map up here, so we, this is the specified mapping that we've created, but um, what I'm gonna do is just check that the category that Plaid gives us is in our map. So like, can we map it to one of our categories? And if so, we assign the, the enum value to uh, this, this variable new category, um, and then we break and we're done. Because if we don't break, by the way, we're gonna just iterate in reverse to shops, to the more generic category, and then we'll be left with that, which is uh, worthless. So um, we do that and we break. And then as you see down here, the final step is, uh, I'm, I'm basically assigning the built-in cat ID for the transaction to the enum value um, that, we've, that we've specified when we're iterating through these categories. So the, the gist of it is like, do we have categories? Okay, then uh, if we do, um, is it in the map? If it is, all right, just get that enum value uh, in the map. So this is like the key value pair. We want the value of that, which is the enum value. And then that enum value gives us the ID. And so basically take the category ID and assign it to the built-in cat ID, pretty simple. And then once we're saving the transaction, we've just specified the foreign key. And so then it will, it will reference that category object as opposed to just the string. And then otherwise, uh, if it doesn't have categories, then um, we're basically just gonna, well, not if it doesn't have categories. So then there's certain scenarios where um, the, like for instance, digital purchase is two words separated by a space. So that might not be recognized in our map. Instead, we might have something like um, coffee. Um, so let's look, or, or beer. So let's say we had like beer and wine. We, we want to, and beer and wine is not a single key in our map. So in, instead, we want to be able to look more specifically. Well, let's separate those and find beer or wine. And so that, that's just, an, an, this is just a branch in logic to get more specific if we need to. And so, if digital purchase, for instance, uh, wasn't found in the map, then we would split this into digital, like a, a list of, of the words, the keywords. We'd iterate through those and we'd say, okay, if digital is in our map, then okay, then we just take the enum value there and do the same thing as before. In here, I'm using this valuable, uh, this variable <laughs> cat found equals true because I, I just, this is kind of a hack to break, break out of this inner loop here. So if we found a category and then we've broken out of this inner loop, it's gonna hit this uh, if condition right here and then it's gonna break. So that way uh, we don't continue iterating through the categories, like I said. So we don't go to, uh, once we've found the most specific match, we don't wanna continue going through categories and, and find a more gen general one. Um, so that's the logic here for categorized transactions. And then um, once we've done that, we want, to, we want a way to actually aggregate uh, those categories for the budget, right? So um, let's go to that next.